Hi, my name is Shira Rubinoff. I am the Chief Strategy Officer for Harrisoft. We're here with today's video series with our guests, Anthem Blanchard, CEO of Harrisoft, as well as Edna Conway, VP, Chief Security and Risk Officer for Azure at Microsoft. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Pleasure. So the global spending on public cloud services is projected to grow over $332 billion in 2021, according to Gartner. While some of this growth is attributed to the results of the pandemic and its effect on businesses as a whole, it is also due to organizations expanding the digital operations. Edna, can you please shed some further insight as to this migration from both a security standpoint as well as operational? Yeah, you know, it's an intriguing time because so many people, as we've discussed, think that the cloud just sort of manifested itself as a result of COVID. And the reality is it's been here for quite some time. And what COVID did was highlight in a very unique way, the power of its capability. And its capability is really all about putting productivity into the hands of the users anytime, anywhere. But more importantly, I think, Sherry, you said something intriguing, which is you asked about its ramifications in the context of security. Well, all of a sudden, you have to think about your cloud service provider and the way in which you use the cloud as something that should be included in your own security picture for your enterprise. We, as cloud service providers, are part of your family, and we should be woven together to know what one another are doing, theoretically at a high level, but I would argue practically at a very detailed level. Now, oh, very interesting and very true. And Anthem, what are your thoughts on that as well? Well, I, I think it's really well said. It's letting experts be experts and letting those that can handle these cloud computer centers handle them rather than what's happened in the past where companies basically also have to be computer mainframe centers and manage all of their own machinery. And so, you know, by letting experts be experts, we all benefit all of our quality of life benefits. And, and it's really exciting. And it, it's quite an honor to be with uh, such legend as yourself, uh, Edna. And thank you for sharing some time with us. Humbled and grateful. Thank you. Well, let's talk edge computing as it relates to the cloud. I'll just say the basic definition of edge computing is a distributed computing paradigm that brings computation and data storage closer to the location, which is needed to improve response times and save bandwidth. It is a topology rather than a technology. Anthem, would you say this is an important move for organizations and why? I think it's critical and I think we're seeing it in these international news headlines. It's unbelievable to see these large conglomerate international organizations be really materially affected by compromises in their software systems ultimately. And we really have to face the fact that all businesses run on software. So without having the software be secure, really our goods and services are stalled. So it's really critical that we really think about ways that we can secure our applications, secure our data, and one way by doing that is just by separating it out. And that's really what cloud does in general. And really distributed cloud is just another step of cloud, really. So it's just saying, instead of putting all the data with the application, put the data where the user is, have the applications be distributed, and then have there be protection mechanisms around that make these software type systems 100% uptime. So it's, it's just an advancement of what's already been. That's true. And Edna, your thoughts? You know, I think of it as uh, if you think about the old days when we had, you know, lands and WANs, and then ultimately, right, you went to the individual device. Think about the edge as the place where you can say, I'm about resilience and productivity, whatever that workflow or power is that you're deriving. We want to make sure that we're executing it in a 5G world, in a bandwidth constrained world, in an efficient and resilient way. So what Edge does is it gives more power to the user and to administrators to deploy where they want, what they want, the capacities that those that are utilizing the cloud demand real time at any moment, where they find themselves and how they wish to use it. 
Well, that was great explanations by both of you and certainly adds a lot to it, but certainly I'll see eye to eye on that. And as we talked about the cloud and the power of it, we now find ourselves in a very unique environment as the U.S. president issued a series of executive orders recognizing the need for resiliency of our nation's supply chains, including the information and communications technologies supply chains. In addition, an executive order asking for public-private partnership to drive higher fidelity on cybersecurity. So Edna, how could cloud services providers contribute to this mission? You know, I think we're at the table and I think this is the time where we need to all, all answer the call from the US and around the world to align. We have well entered some time ago the digital economy and what I like to think of is we're now in the platform economy, where we all rely on these platforms that seemingly are opaque to us. So what do we know about one another? What do we want to share? Information sharing is something I have the privilege of sitting on the executive committee of the US Supply Chain Risk Management Task Force for ICT, that we're talking about in a way to say, what can we do together to share things more effectively and get information out faster so we can drive this for the fidelity of the nation and each and every one of us who rely on as citizens what the nation delivers to us. Well, that's very important. And I know that Anthem has a lot to say on that as well. And I think it's very important discussion on this topic. It's an evolution. It's exciting. It's, you know, all the cards are on the table now, literally, right? We know that pretty much bad actors are in all these systems are all compromised in one way or another. So it's time for everyone, I think, to set aside their disagreements and their hyper competitiveness and think more about how can we layer with each other to create tapestries of trust and really each do good what we're good at and be experts. And, you know, I think now one of the wonderful silver linings of the last year and a half has been an escalation really exponentially of innovation and new ideas being adopted. Um, you know, a lot of ideas that were there, best practices that were maybe not getting adhered to on the security side, for example. Um, I think there's a much greater awareness now. And I think that that's at the least a uh, starting point. And, and that excites me as an innovator and technologist and someone that is bringing value. You know, we, we wanna bring as much value to the world as possible. and. It's wonderful to see the world is embracing uh, secure software as, as something serious. So um, it's it's exciting. That's great. And Edna, any last thoughts around the cloud and this whole topic that you'd like to share with our audience? I think the, the thoughts I would end with are, you know, we're here recognizing that you weave us into the very fabric of your business and your daily lives. We take that commitment seriously so start to look at your cloud service provider as we look at you as a partner and hold us accountable so that we can share with you the architectural methodologies we're using to protect you, all of our customers and ourselves because we don't live in a world any longer of us and them. We only live in a world of they. Excellent. And Anthem, how about yourself? Beautifully said, beautifully said. It's. It's, it's a world where we're going from uh, distrust to trust. And, and really that is because of trusted record keeping that we now have. And what I'm excited about is seeing the commercialization of this trusted record keeping. We call them public protocols. Some people call them public blockchains. You know, really they're just a type of software. Um, they hold data, uh, they perform functions. Again, it's just really an extension of computing of the internet itself and of cloud. And I think the market's ready now. Um, and that's exciting to me to start seeing the commercialization of these distributed type networks that, again, achieve 100% uptime, perfect data integrity and ransomware proof uh, capabilities and abilities. So um, it's, it's a lot of fun uh, being a hobbyist effectively exploring in the technology and now seeing there really being a lot of material adoption. So it, it's quite quite satisfying. Oh, wonderful. Thank you both very much for your information, Chair, and I'm sure our audience will learn a lot from both of your insights. Thank you very much for your time. My privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.